Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program. And I'm excited about today's show. There was a lot of talk last week that I'm a big fan of Nebbiolo, and that is correct. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the varietal. They make some of the most interesting wines in the world, including Barbera and Barbaresco. And uh, and more importantly, um, I think the wines are undervalued. And so to test that theory, we decided to do some Nebbiolo-based wines uh, that were not of the top sphere, but more from Alba or Lange uh, in general. And I'll get into that in a minute. And so we have three wines here 22, 20, and 19 boons, respectfully. So pricey, in the scheme of things, 20 bucks for a bottle of wine is plenty of change, but not the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollar price points that we see from the big boys. And so my real quest, Johnny quest, here is to see if we can find a bargain to be that every day, I was gonna do this, but I fought it, so I'm not. Every day, um, Barolo, or Barbaresco substitute. So for the people that love Parmesan cheese and you know spaghetti with the meatballs, uh, this is a, a, a amazing varietal and, and we'll jump into that. But first I just wanna say thank you. We are now on the other side of 900 episodes. It was fun to have Brandon M on the show the other day. Mott, you know, kind of full circle. He started the episode, what did he say, 18? That's incredible. And uh, thanks Brandon for being on the show. And more importantly, uh, thank you for watching the show. I really appreciate all of you. and. The community of comments means a lot to me and thank you for that. So, three wines here. I'm excited about it. Let's get into the first one. Uh, Malviria, 2005 Lange Nebbiolo. Now, zoom in on that Lange part, Ma. Uh, this is 19 bucks, um, harvested in October. Stainless steel, aged for 18 to 24 months in French oak. Uh, the wine's fermented in stainless steel. Um, and uh, I'm excited about seeing what this wine brings to the table. 19 bones, now, Ma. Lange, Lange, right there, is the encompassing DOC of this entire area, you know, big, big DOC area uh, in uh, Piedmonte area. Um, it is covered within Lange, comes Barolo, comes Barbaresco, but very much like Napa encompasses Stag's Leap or Rutherford Hill, or Medoc encompasses Margot. So, Chateau Margot is in the Medoc, but if you put a Medoc on a wine label, it's not as exciting and very similar to this. The outskirts, you know, maybe not the prime time areas like Barolo and Barbaresco, can say Lange. You know, you also can get things that say Nebbiolo di Alba, because di Alba has some brand recognition. But Lange is, is highly disrespected, only became DOC um, in 1994, I believe, the year I graduated high school. Question of the day what year did you graduate high school, Mott? 79. What was happening in 79? Were you like, were you acting like you were John Travolta? No. No, no. What was your, what, I had, who? The, I had the big, uh, big sideburns. Did you? I didn't have the beard then. But you had the big sideburns? The big sideburns. And what were you into senior year? Like Led Zeppelin? No, I, I didn't like Led Zeppelin until later. The Pirates? Because they, you know, We Are Family was hot then? No? Uh, musically. Terry Bradshaw? Oh, I remember Pink Floyd. Okay. Um, One Day at a Time was your show? What was your show? What, what did you watch in 79? All in the Family? Uh, the Jeffersons? Were you moving on up, Mott? <laughs> yeah, I watched the Jeffersons. Nice. Yeah. I don't remember too well. So you just old. like, you, you, can't, a long time ago. you just can't remember senior high school. I remember the senior, I remember graduating. I remember sitting at the ceremony. And you were pumped? 864 people in my graduating class. Get the heck out of here. It was like a cattle call when they were doing names. What, hey, what, high, what high school did you East go to? Brunswick. East Brunswick High. What was your logo? The Bears. So you were the East Brunswick Bears? Mm -hmm. And who was your rival? The West Brunswick? Uh, South River for a long time, but then they, they stopped it because it was so bad. Really? Yeah. Like you guys were like gangs, like 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 you would bring like knives and like sit like back the, here? Uh, the Jets and the Sharks. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Anyway, um, so I don't know how we got, oh, 94 D, uh, DOC, my graduation year. Uh, Malviria, let's see uh, what's, we brought up the big ass glass here. Now what you'll notice is, all three of these wines do stainless steel fermenting and then go into French oak. And uh, that seems to be a trend that a lot of people want to go with with this grape varietal. Um, as you can see, Nebbiola, and we talked about this last week, it's got that Pinot Noir coloring. It is not at the darkest grape in the world, which is good. 
you know, if you like that kind of thing, you can definitely see your fingers through it. Let's snippy snip it, because that's what we do on the Thunder Show. So aromatically, there's some really nice, subtle raspberry flavors coming in here. I also like the little hint of uh, bark. It's, it's kind of like a tree bark, but kind of like soily as well. So like kind of like topsoil and tree bark, kind of earthy that way. But the sour cherry's really legit. Like too legit. Too legit to quit. Like Dion and, you know, MC Hammer, how they did it back in 92. Let's give it a whirl. This is pretty good. Very tobacco-like. Very dry. Mott. I'm saying mott, by the way. Mott. A lot of people think you're my mom. A lot of people think that I'm saying ma. Right? I mean, you know, you don't look like my mom. So as Christopher Mott um, tastes this, it's, do you see what happened? <laughs> you just did bitter beer face. Like, mm. You did. You just did bitter beer face. It's a beautiful reference. Too dry for you. This one's painfully dry. So this wine is painfully dry for you know a lot of palates. For me, I can't help but think of like some old school. Like if I was Italian, my sixty-seven year old uncle, you know, Vinny would be like, "This is the kind of wine we did it in the old country. It is dry. You know, this is like put the hair on the chest, dry, old world, beautiful, food friendly wine." And, and there's so many palettes out there. I know a lot of you are watching right now. Dry used to be a huge thing. 19, circa 1994, people used to come in and say, give me a dry wine. Very big thing, Mott, that never gets said anymore. You know, many more people are now looking for fruit forward or different nuances. But back in the day, give me something dry was something I heard a lot. That's why they like the Chiantis and things of that nature. This to my palate is not painfully dry, though I respect it and understand it boldly. But it, it also is extremely interesting. I love the tobacco. It almost tastes meaty. It's like a charcuterie dish. Like there seems like the salami and the, the dry cured meats. Like, do you see how it's meaty? Did you get that meatiness at all? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is like a, like a entry plate at a fancy restaurant in New York City where there's like some, you know, dried up cranberries and some meats. And, and that's what I get in this wine. I love that style. This wine is dark, it's interesting, it's bone dry. I like it, this is a very good wine. And to think, that's what you do when you think. How many people out there are drinking crap ass? And I can say it, crap ass, C-R-A-P dash A-S-S. Crap ass Chianti, for this price point, makes me sad. There is a lot of Chianti, 14 to 25 bucks, some have gold labels on them, you know, some are tan, some are other things that are very unacceptable or not interesting that are really relying on brand and you have a wine like Malviria 2005 Nebbioli from Lange who nobody in their right mind is gonna pick up at a store. And just no shot. You know, unless you go to a great restaurant where they have a sommelier who's sick, who's sick and excited and intense about their wines, are you gonna pick this up? This is why I do this show, to expose wines like this, hopefully the others step up, but this one did. I'm scoring at 91 points. And a $19 wine, turn that frown upside down, Lionel Kitty City, 1985, know it. Um, this wine brings thunder, a big opening for Nebbiolo, and again, self-proclaimed, admit it. You know, put, you know uh, yes, your honor, I tell the truth, I am a Nebbiolo fan, but this one even spikes a little higher for me, and I'm kind of excited about it. This might be one of the first wines I actually take more than a bottle or two home to try, because that is good juice, it's a good start. And we go right into another producer that I have long been a fan of, their Barbaresco and Barolos, um, uh, Patin, excuse me, the Barbarescos. Uh, Nebbiolo Diaba, 2007, 20 US dollars, 90 points Antonio Galloni. It spends eight to nine days in stainless steel and then ages for 18 months in one to three year old French and Slovenian oak. Now, if you know anything about me, or especially the people in Cinderella Wine and the Wine Library Forum, People like Galoni. He's a conservative critic. He's tough. He's legit. Um, people like the way he scores. Patin is an amazing producer. I mean, the My Little Ponies love him. 
And 90 points for 20 bones is an exceptional achievement on the Galoni scale. So let's see what's going on here. Ma, can you flip that over? I just wanna see how, when you put a bottle that close, what it looks like on the screen. I like that, okay, thanks. I like that. I feel like Diddy, like that, yeah, yeah. All right, sniffy sniff. Now this is a little stinkier than the Malviria. It's also, you know, ironically, it's a little bit more aromatically challenged. It's stinkier and less explosive, if that makes sense. Kind of tight, tight wine. Let's give it a whirl. This is a creamier and fuller body to wine than the last one. It may even be more dry on the palate. Wow, really, really dry. The tannins on this wine are very, very apparent and may scare off some people on the palate because it is tight, it is real tight. Um, dark chocolate flavors, a little like inkiness, almost like tastes like squid ink, um, almost like a a pen. Remember those big pens? Remember when big pens were everywhere? What do we? I never see them anymore. Really? Like the blue. Pen, you know I what I'm? See them all the time. You do? Yeah. You guys see big pens? I never see. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, I'm the only person on earth that has not seen big pens. Let me let me start over. You know, big pens that are everywhere. We all see them. You know, kind of like if that big pen exploded in your mouth. You know, you, have you ever had a pen explode in your mouth? Not in my mouth. No. Are you serious? Yeah. I'd shoot everything. Anyway, um, that's what this tastes like. It's inky, it's dark, um, and it's bitter. Just like ink. There's a bitter tannins here that um, you know also reminds me of what I love the Malvira. This is real man's wine, you know. I feel like, you know, when you got guns like this, I mean you see them, right? That's the kind of wine us men drink. Um, so <laughs> um, I like this. I, I like this as well. This is a good wine. It's a little less for my palate, but I think a lot of people out there may like it because it's a little creamier, and that creaminess may help a lot of people enjoy it a little more. It's a little bit more food friendly. Uh, let me phrase that, palate friendly, except it's counterbalanced by a very bitter tannins. And if you can mold the two, if you can mold the two, I think it would become a very, very popular wine. For me, this wine rolls in at 88 plus points. Very, very good. Very much worth the 20 bones in my opinion. Don't go by score pricing, I'll just say it that way. But the bitterness was too much, too harsh, and uh, eliminates me from it. You know, from it, from the standpoint of when I go berserko and start doing backflips. That being said, I do like the Nebbiolo ones. Good wine so far. Muntaya, uh, which comes from Osvaldo Barberis. Nebbiolo, 2007, 22 US dollars, fermented for nine days in stainless steel and then 12 months in oak. Let's see what's going on here. The uh, Nebbiolo show, doing well. A little darker, darkest of the bunch. Let's give it a snippy snip. Wow, by far the fruitiest. This is coming across with cherry juice and strawberries. And a little bit of like a cotton candy component and a little artificial. This has the most artificial smell to it. It, it smells like a, a candy store. Like one that's heavy on red candy. Let's give it a whirl. Cassis too. Heavy actually. Ooh. Wow, that's interesting. Cherry juice mixed with sauerkraut juice. So like if you got a big batch of sauerkraut, you know, you took it all out, the juice there, you took some cherry juice, mixed it in, and drank it. That's what this tastes like. It is bitter beer face. Man, that's a big theme today. Um, very sour, almost tastes like a Sour Patch Kid before you get to the sweet part. Like just really there. This is, I mean, I don't get affected by sourness all that much. This is way out there. This is not a good effort. It's a disjointed wine. It's too sour. Um, it tastes artificial. Um, 
like ca carbonic maceration, like just, it just feels fake. Uh, it, it would be the best way I can put it. It, it tastes like a, um, a breakfast cereal, you know, is, is the best way I can put it. It tastes like, um, actually it tastes a little bit like a breakfast cereal. Um, you know, Captain Crunch has crunch berries. If you ever had a crunch berry, it tastes a little bit like that, I'm not kidding. It's just that artificial in flavor. It tastes like candy instead of fruit, if that makes sense. You know, you can have a strawberry candy and you can have a strawberry and you know how they taste different? That's the analogy here. I don't like this wine. I'm gonna score this wine 76 points. You know, great year, because it's you know, America's birthday. You know, but other than that, I don't like it. I would not recommend it. And it really puts a damper on what was a highly momentum-driven Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo show, but it is what it is. I am excited about discovering the Malvira which is a big discovery for me. Patine is probably a big home run. I might have even been tough on it, um, but it is what it is. Good show, interesting varietal. I have a feeling a lot of you have not had 100% Nebbiolo outside of Barolo or Barbaresco, um, and I, uh, I'd really like to see you guys go there. So please, discover the grape. It is so worth your while, and, um, and sometimes you have clunkers, but a lot of times you find wines under 20 bucks that dominate, that are real. And, uh, and that's what it's all about. Question of the day, besides your graduation year. Um, what Nebbiolo has excited you? And if you've never had one, will you? You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world.